Hi class, welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom. And in this video, we are going to explore again, integration by parts. Now, my last video, we talked about a problem where we were integrating x times sine x dx. Well, I've made a just subtle change to this problem. And instead we have x squared times sine x dx. And you might not think like that's a big deal, but let's just see what is actually going to happen in this problem that makes it a little bit bigger deal than you might expect here from the beginning. But just like the last problem, we need to identify what my u's are, my u primes, my v primes, my v's, all that stuff so that we can then put it in the form of the biparts formula. So that's the key here. We're going to keep consistent with what we did previously where the first function given, let's let that be the u. So we have u is equal to x squared. That's the first function. And we are going to find the derivative of that u, so u prime, that will be 2x. Okay. The second function is our sine x, but that is our v prime, not the v, just v prime. So I'm going to put it here on the line with the derivatives, and let's let this be our sine x. So v prime is sine x. Now I need to figure out, well, what is v? So again, like the last video, we talked about when we go vertically up, in this case, I need to find the antiderivative of v prime equals sine x to give me what v is. So you need to think about, again, what the derivative of, sorry, what the antiderivative of sine x would be. Well, that's going to be our cosine x. And then again, you go through the mental exercise of, well, if I actually take the derivative of cosine x to check myself, do I really get sine x? Oh wait, no, we don't because the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So I fix that by having a negative out front here of this cosine x. So truly the antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x, just like it was in my last problem. Once I have all the pieces here, I need to go back to my original problem and put in place all of the rest of the stuff. The initial problem is set up much like the initial formula is set up. X squared is the U, sine X is the V prime. So we can, we'll continue on here with the rest of the formula that it will be equal to U times V. So that's these two getting multiplied together. So that's X squared times a negative cosine X. So we'll call that negative x squared cosine x for the first part. Then subtract our integral still of u prime times v. So here's our u prime, here's our v. We wanna multiply those two guys together. So we have a two x times a negative cosine x as my integrand here. So that will be a negative two x cosine x dx. Okay, so now we want to continue on and uh, we notice a couple things here. One, I've got a negative that just like the last problem I can pull out front of the integral, but I also have a two that I can pull out in front of the integral. So let's just take care of all of that. So this is equal to a negative x squared cosine x plus two times the integral of x cosine x dx. Okay, so the good news is I have at least gone down in terms of my power of that first function u that was in front. I started with an x squared. In this here, I now have just an x, so that's a good, good news. The bad news is I still have another product that I have to deal with, and that involves yet another biparts structure to this. So now I have to think about, all right, for this piece right here, I have to figure out what all the parts are and put that piece into a biparts structure in the formula to finish off finding the integral of that, all because I was multiplying x by that cosine x. So I start that process again and I say, okay, well here I need to pick another u and another v prime. So I continue this and back, um, connect it here with the formula. I see my first function x, that's going to be my u. Cosine x will be my u prime. So this time around, I will have 
u will be equal to just x, such that u prime is one, love that. And then we have our v prime is cosine x, and now we need to find the antiderivative of that v prime. Well, the antiderivative of cosine x will be sine x. And then just, again, to make sure you have all the signs correct, think about, well, if I were to find the derivative of sine x, is that derivative of sine x actually cosine x? Yes, it is. So that's all good there. So we go back up to the problem and we continue on. So I say, okay, just drop this term down, just rewrite that, negative x squared cosine x plus two times, and I'm gonna put this in brackets because according to the biparts formula, I'm gonna have two components here and I just wanna be very careful that I tell the world that I had a two out there in the beginning. And so I continue on with, according to the biparts, take my u and multiply that by the v. So I have my x times my sine x. So here's x sine x, then minus the integral of u prime times v. Well, that's u prime here times this v. So one times sine x. That's why we love the one here because now we just literally have sine x as my integrand here. All right, so we are almost home free, except I still have yet one more integral. But the good news is that is just one function hanging out there. It's just the integral of sine x itself. We can handle that no problem. So let's do that. I'm just gonna rewrite my stuff, negative x squared cosine x plus two times uh, have a bracket here. I'm going to go ahead and keep that two on the outside just because I want to. So this is x sine x minus, and now I just think, what is the antiderivative of sine x? Well, cosine x, and then we just double check. If I take the derivative of cosine x, do I get exactly sine x? Oh no, I don't. I get a negative sine x. So we will account for that by when we take the antiderivative of sine x is saying negative cosine x. But I already had a negative sitting here, so this will make that a positive, and then we will have cosine x um, in its place. Now, of course, I had a uh, indefinite integral with no boundaries there in the beginning, so I do need to go ahead and add my c um, there um, at the end. And of course, like I mentioned, you could, if you wanted, distribute here um, the two on both of those. Not really needed. It could stay just like this. And so I'm going to go ahead and box this as my final answer for the antiderivative. And in this case, it was a nice example to sort of showcase that you might have to do the biparts process more than once in a problem. And it's possible you have to do it three times, maybe four times all depending on the structure of the, the problem in the beginning. If I change this to a cube, we would have to do this three times. If I change this to a five, we would have to do this five times. So there's something to do, it's kind of interesting thought process here to think about how the higher exponent kind of necessitates the additional by parts processes that goes on for integrating um, this particular function. So I hope you enjoyed this video. In my next video, we'll do another example of integration by parts that just kind of gets a little more trickier. So please click on the Advantage logo at the bottom to subscribe to our channel. Thanks.